Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of TNT Creations. This one's going to be a little bit different. This isn't a can we get it to run or can we get it to drive or anything like that. Uh, this truck's been around for a little while and really I guess it's kind of your first update on the truck. Um, it's just going to be like Tucker's High Boy. I mean, we have our own projects that we love doing and stuff like that. So we got to make time for our own stuff, not only pulling these cars out of stuff, which we love doing that as well, but this is kind of the roots of where it all started for both of us on wrenching. This is my 1977 F-150 that I'm doing a full restoration on. Uh, we'll give you a quick walk around the truck while I'm talking, but the frame, axles, everything's been powder coated on this truck, suspension components and everything. We've got a 351 modified big block 385 series Ford that I did rebuild with a C6. I don't even remember what transfer case is in it. It's been so long. I think a 205. A 205 transfer case. But it's been so long. But I have had this motor running before. I've put my heat cycles to it. I've done everything that I need. But we had to get it out of storage and bring it over here to the lovely carport where all of this kind of started because I need to piece this thing back together and get it running again. From working on Tucker's 460 to this, we've interchanged parts and done different things like that to diagnose his and just little things here, but this needs to be put back together and in running form so that way maybe hopefully soon we can work on putting a cab on it. So we'll give you some more details as we work on the thing, but for right now, we're just gonna dive into it. We need to put a distributor back in it, stab it in a TDC, we need to mount my carburetor back on it. And then hopefully we'll be able to fire this thing up, put it through one last little heat cycle, just because it is a new cam that's in it and get it more ready for a cab and a bed and a body to go onto this truck. As you guys can see, we already put the carburetor on. It's just, you know, simple four bolts, not that big of a deal. What we're going to do now is we're going to bump the starter slowly. We're going to find PDC on this whole thing so that we can get a distributor stabbed into it. That was quick. Why'd you put my cap right on top of the fan? Because I forgot about it. Good. Yes. Cranky. Just bump it. Okay, so we see exhaust moving, bump again. Exhaust is coming up, see intake going down, bump, bump, intake coming up, bump, 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 bump. bump. Ooh, that was a lot. I can feel the cylinder coming up. And all I'm doing is I'm just sticking this little Allen key in here. Intake closed. So that means the cylinder's coming up for its compression stroke. So I'm going to stick it in here. He's going to lightly bump it. It doesn't need much. Okay, cylinder already went down. So I guess let's get the wrench back out. Turn her counterclockwise. What I'm looking for here when I stab this distributor is I'm looking for when that piston just comes to the top and it hangs for a split second before it starts going down. Okay, he's rotating the engine backwards. that okay so it came up hung for a second and it went back down but since we're going backwards we want to go the right way and I'm gonna feel that cylinder come up Thank you. 
Oop. Okay. Came up. It hung for just a second, and then I barely felt it go down, just a little bit. So that's a little bit past TDC, which is perfectly fine. We're going to be able to stab the distributor and not have a problem. Now, when it comes to stabbing a Ford distributor, Fords have an oiling rod on the bottom of them. It's a hexagonal rod. And that's what drives your oil pump when it drives the cam. I have always had trouble when I go to stick a distributor in that oiling rod falling out. So I've never been told it's wrong. Maybe some of you guys can teach me and tell me it's wrong, but I've always taken just a tiny bit of Teflon tape, wrapped it around the top of that rod and then shoved the rod into place. So that way it's not going to come out, it's not going to fall out when I go to stab my distributor in place. Look at that, fell right into place. Uh, unhook the bucket. Okay. Way ahead of you there. Sweet, thank you. Okay. Try not to laugh at my wiring. It's not professional, but it's the do it yourself standalone harness for a 70s model Ford to get it to fire up. Just trying to get my number one lined up with my rotor bug. And I've heard people say it a thousand times, I mean, I, I say it myself sometimes too, is try to face your rotor bug towards cylinder number one, and in a perfect world, I would do that all the time. But with the bracketry that was on this engine for the AC compressor and, you know, having a bigger wine style intake on this, it's easiest for me to put my vacuum advance st pointing straight out. So that way I can actually put some timing into this thing and I won't have anything that's in my way from bugging me from timing it. So I always just let cylinder number one fall kind of where it wants to be. I always try to face on this truck. I try to put the rotor bug towards the rear because my number one cylinder is calling for this right here. And you can kind of see in there my vacuum advance is straight out. When I put some timing in this, it will move, but now I have full control of being able to move it side to side. Sometimes you just can't point it towards cylinder number one because of the things that you've put on the engine or what you're wanting to. That's fine. It's not like the truck's not gonna run. Just a little background on this engine. It is a 351 modified. It came out of a seven. It was in the truck when I got the truck, a 77 F-150. Not a whole lot's been done to it. It's been bored 40 over just to clean up the cylinder walls. Um, the heads have been ported just a little bit to help it breathe. No major port job or anything like that. Just a little bit with, you know, some die grinder, some at home stuff. Uh, new valve springs to match the cam. The cams is a Mellings mtf-2 cam it's uh, at 50 it's 204 214 the valve lift is 483 and 512 cam lift is 280 something 260 280 something and with a one tablet with a 110 lobe separation it's not the biggest cam in the world but it is going to be a decent little street cam. Uh, might have to run, you know, like a vacuum canister for vacuum brakes and stuff like that. But we're just going to have to cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. And the distributor turns counterclockwise. So it turns like that. The firing order I have 
The spark plug wires have already been made up on this truck because it's already been done before, but we've had to take things off, move things around, and do all of that. Yeah, so one, three. Uh, what's the order so we can just be for certain? Oh, it is one, three, seven, and then two, six, five, four, eight. So, one, three, seven, two, six, five, four, eight. All right, so Tucker's gonna get us all hooked up here. We've got our fuel pump. I did run an electric fuel pump on this truck. I just kind of like an electric fuel pump, but get her fired up, get timing set just a little bit on it, see what it wants to do. If anything, who knows? Go ahead. One more time without the fuel pump on.
that was a little something. You noticed off the start there, doing our whole deal with that distributor being loose, we must have moved it because she was she was way out of whack. It looked like it was really retarded. It was, it was, because even, even when I had it running over here and I walked over to you and you said you couldn't really see it, you, it was um, like 11 degrees retarded. I was gonna say because I couldn't see the lines. I was like, yeah, it was it was just barely above it. And another thing, the reason why this thing probably ran decent at 11 degrees retarded, I mean, granted, it, it wasn't running good. I wouldn't even consider it running amazing at the 10 degrees of uh, advance that I put it at. But I advanced my cam four degrees with my timing chain, so this thing doesn't take near as much timing, you know. Usually small block Chevy or something like that, you can throw 30 degrees. Small block Mopar, 318, 360, 302. If you don't want vacuum advance, you know, race application or something like that, you can throw 30 degrees of timing at the thing. And it might run a little rough at idle, but it'll take off if you don't want to mess with vacuum advance. But this one, I could kind of hear it a little bit. Once I got above 10 and I started going to 12, it kind of started to break up. Well, I'm four degrees advanced there on my actual timing chain and my cam. So 10 degrees is probably gonna be where this thing sits. It's good to hear it run again. Sounds like it's running on all cylinders. Yet again, hard to hear with the exhaust. It's so loud, but, uh. <laughs> but it's back together. It is in running form and I can throw a carb hat on it, plug the exhaust and we can come back to it whenever I have time from doing the different cars and stuff like that. And Tucker has time and we can dial this thing in a little bit more, get a vacuum gauge on it, actually hook up our vacuum vents and stuff like that. But I'm not ready to not hear it run anymore. So fire it up one last time. Did you end, you ended up hooking the fuel pump back up after it ran for a little bit, right? Okay. Yeah, once it fired up, I hooked it back up. Okay. It might have a misfire right now, but it's way too loud to be hearing much of anything in this all metal carport. Hopefully I ain't got to touch nothing. Hopefully you bang bang the starter and it's ready to go. Feel fine. Yep. Yeah. sensor or on my little gauge here because when this thing first fired up I had 50 pounds of oil pressure and then all of a sudden I looked over at it and it only had 20 pounds so this gas gets leaking a little on this valve cover yeah here's two well 
there it is. My little 351 modified that back in its running form and ready for the next task of bodies, wiring, brakes, all the all the fun other stuff. This is the fun part and it's somewhat done now. So now comes all the other hard work that isn't near as fun, but we appreciate you guys watching just this short little video. I know it's kind of out of the ordinary, but it is stuff that, you know, we like to do and the stuff that we build besides what you see on the pull out and drive and, you know, can we get it running and different things like that. So appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode of TNT Creations.